Yes! Straight on it! Going to do a gear rundown today. Um, after the last Monty's videos, finished the last one last week, so a heap of people wanted to see what I used. I haven't got everything because that would take me a year to go through. So I'm only going to run down what actually caused stuff because I'm pretty sure everyone only wants to see that stuff anyway. So I've got all the rods over here, reels across the front, lures that did the best, leaders, hooks, swivels, line, just some extra accessories to take as well, just for backup. I'm gonna do this a bit different. So as I run through stuff, I'm gonna flash some photos up of what we've caught on the gear so you can actually sort of see. If you wanna look through and figure it out, you can go and watch all the videos be there a while there's nine of them um, but if you want to see all of this gear is in use in all those videos start with the lightest and go through to the heaviest stuff I think Daiwa in feet 702 LRS rod uh, it's my light tackle brim combo I pair it up with a Luvius 2506 great little reel um, filled with 12 pound Taz line so this combo is what got that big sand snapper, um, the fish in the abandoned pearl farm, wicked fun. I can't believe some of the stuff that I actually stopped on this. It was just absolutely nuts. It's done really, really well for an ultra light rod. So that's combo number one. 16 pound Varabas leader on that for the whole trip on the 12 pound Taz line, perfect combo. Um, Held up to some amazing stuff. Don't know how, but did. So, uh, this one. So, got Blue Sniper 96ml Yamaga. Um, 9 foot 6 PE2 rod. I pair that up with my Dialer Exist 4000 LT. This is one reel that I do not know how it's still alive. It is an absolute freak of a reel. I put it through hell. Um, this trip did have some issues with it. I hooked a shark, it pulled 300 meters of line in about 30 seconds, it nearly completely spooled this reel. The plastic washers under the spool got so hot they fused together. That was the only issue that this reel had and that hooked 150 kilo shark that nearly took all its line in a matter of seconds. The reel got super, super hot. I've had it back for service since, and the guys at service literally replaced the drag washers, plastic washers on the spool, and it feels like new again. Don't know how this thing is a freak. It is an amazing reel. Um, it's my Taylor sort of salmon rod. It does really, really well for casting stick baits, light plastics, filled with 20 pound Taz line. It's a perfect, perfect combo for that light tackle sort of stuff. Doesn't have the balls to turn big fish. I got the GT on this combo on the first night. This rod pretty much caught everything light tackle this trip. The Exist basically had a 50 pound moi moi leader on it for the entire trip. I went through 100, yeah, I went through two spools of this. So 100 meters, yeah, 50 meter spools. I went through 100 meters of this in two weeks. We'll go up to the 40 pound setup, Daiwa Surtape 4000 HD, 40 pound Taz line on that, and I was running it on this rod. Blue Sniper 100M Yamaga, um, I was running this rod. I've only got the bottom section, because the top section is a little bit sad. It's in a couple of pieces. So, this rod did get the tusk fish. Um, it did get me some good fish early on but I did bang it on the rocks and then it snapped casting it a couple of days later. Completely my fault, no fault to the rod. Um, these things happen rock fishing, you, you're hard on your gear. Things get broken, but this was the only broken bit of gear that we had for the entire two weeks and it was entirely my fault. Because that rod did break, I did end up using that 96, the PE2 rod with the Certate on it for the rest of the trip. The exist was just a little bit undergunned for most stuff. As I found out, this reel got empty and I had to change the line on it halfway through the trip because I did get that big GT, took all my line, 
lost lost all of it just didn't couldn't stop it so i was using this certate on the p2 96 ml blue sniper for most of the trip i was running an 80 pound leader on that moi moi again for the whole trip this is all that's left of two spools that's nearly empty there was two spools of that so i've used probably 80 90 meters of 80 pound as well on that Leaders are definitely overkill. Um, we are fishing off the rocks. If your line touches on something sharp, it's all over. So if your broad can cast a thicker leader, we definitely do. The next up, sort of 50 or 80. I went, once again, went a bit overkill. So the 106H Yamaga Blue Sniper. It's a P5 rod. Excellent for casting sort of 80, 100 grams. Um, I was throwing a lot of a lot of larger lures on it, mostly for smaller GTs. I got that good cod, got a couple of GTs on this rod, pulled hooks on that big GT on that last day. Amazing rod, heaps of power, really good to work those smaller lures um, for the larger fish, but still have enough power to stop them. With 5,000 Catalina, looks really, really cool. Nothing wrong with the standard spool. Uh, I haven't even used it since I've had the reel, to be honest, so I've literally just put this ball on just because it's cool. There's no line on this reel anymore. I ran out of line. I did have 80 pound TAS line on it. So it only gets about 220, 250 meters on that size ball, but that's more than enough. I wanted the line thickness over having, I'd normally run 50 or 60 pound on this reel. I wanted 80 pound on it because I knew that I would be casting for finicky GTs and things like that. So I wanted the, much much thicker line to give me that extra abrasion resistance if i did hook big gts massive overkill with the leader 150 pound moi moi was on 5000 catalina through that 106 h uh blue sniper don't want to be losing fish because you're running too thin a leader if your rod can handle it cast the extra leader deep jigging setup had a few questions on that that was day three went out deep dropping um, I am going to be replacing this combo. This is just something that I've had that's done the job. I don't do a lot of boat fishing, but it's done the job quite well for what I've needed. So it's just a Jignesis uh, X Fighting P4 to 8 uh, overhead jigging rod. Very heavy rod. I use it for Samson fish as well. Um, so it's done the job overhead. And we'll be upgrading this as well. I just haven't had the chance to, but. This is a Maxwell uh, Transformer F70. Yeah, Maxwell Transformer F70. Um, it's filled with 50 pound TAS line. I think there's about 900 meters on this because uh, we've fished out to over 400 meters of water with this reel, um, dropping six, 800 gram jigs into stupid deep water. So running this, I'm able to drop into ridiculously deep water. We were fishing into 230, 240 meters of water for those ruby snapper. Um, all on jigs, manual wine. Takes a fair bit of effort, but certainly worth it. Uh, the heavy gear, big dogfight. Dialer 8000H dogfight, filled with 100 pound TAS line. That is an absolute beast. Can pull me off my feet if I turn that drag up too much. Huge reel, matches nicely with the last rod. First chance I got to use it was my Ripple Fisher Runner Exceed Final Stand Up. This rod is 10 foot P10 land based GT weapon. It is a very, very particular rod. Um, this is a factory custom model as well. Uh, I had this specifically made in the candy red with the red and black bindings as I asked for. It's an amazing rod. Works lures wicked. On its first trip up north, it got some of, it got probably my two best fish of the trip, that big GT, got that massive Chinaman. Still, yeah, still buzzing about that Chinaman chasing that lure down on the surface. And the GT strike, if you go back and watch the videos, casting a GT is hunting around in the mangroves in two meters of water sight casting to them as well and watching the fish smash this lure and take off it just absolutely insane so i'm certainly happy that i had the heavy heavy gear cool so that's all the combos we've got catalina certate dogfight 
exist, luteus, and then the jigging axle. Um, the GT gear, oh, leader for the GT gear, 200 pound Varabas. No point going light with that, just go overkill. Same thing, if your rod can cast it, go heavy. You can always drop back later if the fish are being finicky or hard to find. Spare line, took a lot of spare line with us. So there's a spare spool, over 700 meters of 50 pound TAS line. There's another spare spool of 80 pound TAS line. Took lots of spares, expecting to lose some. Every trip that we go on, at least one reel gets spooled. For spooling, spooling the reels up, took the busted fishing line spooler as well. So with the spools, if we did need to spool it up, we can spool them up under tension. Um, then we don't have any issues with line digging in and stuff like that. Last thing you want is to cast out, hook a fish, your line dig in and then snap off because you haven't wound your line on tight enough, especially when you're in a hurry or you're doing it late at night, stuff like that. That's just easy. Uh, accessories, some little fixer bits. So this is just one of the trays that I had in the backpack. So. Knives, spare scissors, braid scissors, little pliers, some grease for some of the waterproof zips on the bags. We're using those HPA dry bags that we're using. They've just got like a little uh, dry grease to keep them nice and sealing properly. And then just a little general fix it kit with some oils, pliers, tape, um, screwdrivers, just some small tools, some Loctite, um, handle knobs tend to come loose on those sort of trips. So a bit of Loctite to hold them tight. Last thing you want is a knob coming off your reel. And then <laughs> being a pain trying to put it all back together and then it keeps coming loose. So Loctite's always handy. Just a general little toolkit just to fix things if you need to. Varabas Salt Away, uh, salt spray. Um, I don't wash my reels when I'm away. Uh, I very, very rarely do anyway, just to keep the worst of the salt off them. And then they get rinsed properly when they come home. Um, same with tackle guard as well. We can give them a bit of spray with that. Um, I didn't really bother this trip, but if I do, like I've had trips before where I've dropped them in the sand or dropped that had a real go, I've uh, dunked it underwater by accident, stuff like that. So a bit of salt away, a bit of tackle guard can actually keep your reel going for another 10 days until you get back where you can give them a good rinse and clean when you're back home. This is just a couple of the tackle trays. I had heaps more as you would have seen. There was trays for soft plastics, trays for spare hooks, which I've got here. I've got one with spare split rings and terminal bits and pieces. There was trays for lures. There was trays, trays for trays. There was stuff for everything. I took way too much stuff. Lost a lot of lures, but wasn't too, too bad in the end. Decoy heavy split rings for the heavy stuff and everything, all the lighter stuff. Um, is all BKK split rings for all the 50 pound and below split rings. They were all BKKs, number fours through to sevens. This one's got all the big GT hooks in it, the big trebles, big singles, big split rings, all of that for all the larger lures throwing on the 50 pound and above. Um, there's a heap of spare bait hooks, heap of spare inline singles for the smaller ones. This was fully loaded um, before we went, had all of my spare hooks that weren't already rigged on lures in containers. So we'll go through lures that I've got left that work best. Um, start off with the bow stuff anyway, so 600 gram seafloor control uh, rector. This is the jig that I was using for the ruby snapper. Worked really, really well. Um, able to get that down 200 meters of water. So. Don't like full glow on super deep jigs, so stripes or dots, I certainly find much better than a full glow. Go through the light tackle. You guys would have seen me using this a lot. Uh, this is a Jump Rise 130BR. Um, upgraded it with BKK Raptors trebles. I just run trebles on the rear of this lure, only because if you are to find anything teeth like a mackerel or something like that, if you do get hooked up with only the rear hooks on, the lure itself can act like a bit of a bite leader, so you don't need to run wire. Um, so the, as long as the fish hasn't swallowed it, you've got a pretty decent chance of landing it because the teeth are going to be rubbing over the front of the lure if it's hooked at the back of it. So pretty cool little tip, just in case you are fishing places with mackerel like we were. We did see a fair few Spanish, but didn't land any. There's little uh, mahi box poppers. Um, 
great on the 40 pound gear as well. They certainly float and fish very, very well for their size, even though they, I did upgrade the hooks to very, very large hooks. Um, we got some good spangos on this, had a fair few hits from big GTs, once again, missed hookups, just the usual. Next one's a duo press bait. Uh, this got me my big queen fish, not this exact lure. I ended up losing that a couple of days later, but this exact size, just a different color. Um, on the first night, this duo realis uh, 120 um, jerk bait, that got me my GT on the first night. The black lure, it's got some huge teeth marks all through the side of it. All these lures, um, the singles, single hooks are fitted, uh, that are fitted are BKK Diablos in different sizes from 1.0 through to 3.0 and all the little trebles are all um, BKK Raptors. So that's pretty much everything that I use on a light tackle is the Raptors and the Diablos. Really super strong hooks because we do fish our gear very, very hard and standard hooks just don't cut it when we're trying to run these sort of smaller lures on 30, 40 pound gear. So everything else straightens, but haven't had any issues with these Diablos and Raptors, which have been great. Um, this lure got me uh, one of the smaller GTs. So it's a ASWB SS80, fitted with BKK Raptors. Pretty sure these are four O's, um, and then heavy split rings as well. So, and then, Two big lures. So, I got a Red Tank Siege 180 fast sink. Um, Isaac made some custom fast sink ones for us for down south. And this is the lure that got me that big GT. Um, it's held up super well. There's no chips or anything through the resin. There's heaps of teeth marks in it. That was fitted with 5.0 BKK uh, GT Rex trebles. And yeah, no issues at all with that. Super confident using this lure. They swim really, really good. Cast really well. It's, yeah, awesome lure. And definitely got me my fish of the trip with that massive GT. Next one. Um, I bought this lure second hand off an auction. I didn't realize how big it actually was. So it's 170 grand hitter Aurora Star or Blaze Garage they're called now. This thing is massive. I had the biggest set of BKK GT Rex troubles that there is hanging off this. It still was swimming really well. So I cast it around as a bit of a joke. I was like, that's it. It was real quiet. I'm going big. I'm going to see if something's going to eat this. I expected a cod, a shark, or a GT being the only things that would even dare to have a go at this. To get a Chinaman like that, come up. I watched it come up in the car and chase this down, smash this lure off the top and then reef the crap out of me on the only rock that was anywhere near us. Awesome. That's pretty much all of the rods, reels, the best lures that we used. Um, in terms of knots for leaders, uh, the only knot that I ever use for tying leaders to um, leaders braid is FG. That's all the gear that we've used. That's the whole whole works of all the rods, reels, leader, line, the best lures of the trip, bits of spares, um, repair kit, all that kind of stuff. And then just my organization with the trays and then all the other lures and stuff like that that we had. So this is just a quick basic rundown of what we took. Um, yeah, the only thing different is we just took a lot more leaders, a lot, uh, lot more leader, a lot more lures, a lot more spares and hooks and terminal tackle and stuff like that. A heap of stuff for bait as well because I did use crabs for like the tusk fish got on crab. Um, but yeah, don't have to go as extreme as we did, but being out there for two weeks, you don't want to be messing around with not enough gear. So we took everything that we needed. This is just my gear as well that I took to be able to have enough gear to be able to do as many different things as we did. So if you've been following the videos, from the Monty's trips, you would have seen that we did so many different things, right from chasing the smallest of fish on ultralight gear, right up to massive GTs, deep dropping sailfish, you name it, we had it covered. So it's really, really good to be able to have so many options and chase as many fish as we did. Absolutely amazing trip, but yeah. Thanks heaps, guys. 
let us know in the comments below if there's anything else you want us to cover and we can do that in future videos. Cheers, legends.